Hey everyone, my name is Wolfgang and today I'm going to show you how to set up a two-factor authentication with the SSH and Nextcloud on your Linode cloud server. And the best part is going to take less than 10 minutes. So what is two-factor authentication for those who don't know? Well, basically you would normally log into services and websites with your login and password. However, that's not super great for security because both of those things can be leaked or somehow found out by a third party. Now, two-factor authentication adds a second layer of security to that chain by either using an app on your phone, an SMS, or a physical token key like this one. Now, I wouldn't recommend using SMS for two-factor authentication. That method has been criticized by a lot of security experts because because it's vulnerable to attacks like SIM swapping. So somebody can basically make a copy of your SIM card and get all the authentication codes that are supposed to be addressed to you on their phone. It's illegal in most countries, but it's still doable. So that leaves us with two methods, either a physical key such as YubiKey or an app on your phone that generates time-based one-time passwords. But let's not waste any more time and let me show you exactly how to set up both of those methods on your Linode server. So the first thing that we need to do is create a Linode. I wanna talk about the US choice a little bit because it's kind of important. If you wanna use a physical token key for SSH login such as YubiKey, you'll need a Linux distro which has OpenSSH 8.2. It is relatively new at the time of filming so not all distros support it yet. Debian 10 for example is one of those distributions that don't support it yet so we'll have to go with something newer like Ubuntu 2004. Then you need to choose a region. I'll go with Frankfurt, Germany since it's the closest one to me. As of the plan, I'm going to go with the cheapest nano plan. And by the way, if you want to get a $100 credit for your Linode server, check out the link in the video description. Next, choose a label for your server. I'm going to call it Nextcloud. Then enter a password of your choice for the root user. I would advise you to click on the show password button because you only get to enter it once. And as you can see, there's actually an option to upload your own SSH key, but Linode doesn't support the key cipher that works with YubiKey yet. Don't worry though, we'll just do it later. And then finally, tick the private IP box and click on create. Now, while our server is starting up, let's get ourselves a domain name. This step isn't mandatory, but I found that YubiKey authentication doesn't work in Nextcloud unless you're using HTTPS. And as far as I know, that's not possible without a valid domain. Plus, it's convenient because you actually don't have to remember the IP address of your server to connect to it. Domain names are pretty cheap these days, and you can get one for less than $1 a year. I'm gonna use this domain name which I got for one of my personal projects. So what we need to do essentially is point the domain name to our Linode server. The process may differ depending on your provider, but basically you need to create an A-type DNS record, choose a subdomain if you want, and then copy and paste the IP address of your Linode server. After that, wait for a few minutes and try pinging your domain name. If it points to Linode servers, that that means you're good to go. Keep in mind that in some rare cases it can actually take up to 24 hours for the DNS record to activate. Now let's log into our server. Open a terminal window and type ssh root at your domain name. Type in your root password and there we go. Now we can start configuring our server. First thing that I personally do is type touch dot hush login to disable this huge welcome text. Next, we need to update our system and get all the newest packages. Type sudo apt update double ampersand sudo apt upgrade. Press enter and wait until all of the updates are installed. Once that's done, let's reboot our system. Type reboot and press enter. Another thing that I like to do is create a non-root user with pseudo privileges. Let's log in back to the server and then type user add m capital G pseudo username. Next, create a password for your user by typing pass wd username. And after that, type exit. Now let's generate this SSH key. If you don't have a YubiKey, if you just want to know how to set up a two-factor authentication with your phone, you can skip this section altogether. Starting with OpenSSH 8.2, you can now use your YubiKey as a hardware-based SSH key. There are two types of keys that support this, one of them being AD25519SK, which is the one we're going to use. I don't know which one is better, I just, I just like the name. First thing you need to do is plug in the YubiKey into your computer. Next, open a terminal and type SSH-keygen dash t ed25519 dash sk dash f and the path to which you want to save the key. Then when you see the text saying you may need to touch your authenticator to authorize key generation, touch the token with your finger. Then enter your password of choice twice and that's it, the key is now generated. Now we're going to copy the SSH key that we created earlier to the server. Open a terminal on your local machine and type this command ssh copy dash id dash i path to the key username at the main name. Then enter your password and after the key is copied, let's try to log in with it. After you enter the command, your YubiKey should blink and when it does, simply touch it with your finger and there we go. Now your SSH login is protected by a physical token key. 
Now I'm going to change my shell to bash since I'm a dum dum and I forgot to specify while creating the user. And then we need to put our domain name in two files, slash etc slash hostname and slash etc slash hosts. I'm not sure if that's necessary, but I guess it won't hurt. If you also don't want to see localhost on the right side of your shell prompt, you can use sudo hostnamectl set dash hostname to set it to anything you like. I'm going to set mine to nextcloud. Now, YubiKey is great, but I definitely wouldn't recommend just using that as your second factor. Token keys are small, and you can actually easily lose one, and when you do, you'll be locked out of your server forever. Plus, sometimes you're just too lazy to get your butt off the computer chair. I don't judge, I've been there. So that's why we're going to set up another two-factor authentication method, and that is an app on your phone. For that, we need to install a package called libpam-google-authenticator. Don't worry, you don't actually have to use the Google Authenticator app on your phone, since the protocol is open source and compatible with a lot of third-party apps. I'm going to use an app called EndOTP on Android. It's completely open source and you can download it from FDroid. Once the package is installed, type google-authenticator and answer yes to all the questions except for the second one. Now scroll up and as you can see, I actually have to make my text smaller so that the QR code fits. But yeah, now we need to open the app on the phone and find an option called scan a QR code. It might be in a different spot depending on the app that you use, but almost all of the 2FA apps have this option. Just scan the code and that's it. Now your phone is going to generate one-time passwords for your Linode server. Finally, the last thing that we need to do in order to set up a two-factor authentication for our SSH server is make PAM and SSHD aware of our phone app. First, let's edit the file called slash etc slash pam dot d slash sshd. We need to add just one line at the end of the file, auth required pam underscore google underscore authenticator dot so. Save the file and quit. Now open the SSH configuration file at slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. Let's change a few settings here. First, let's set permit root login to no. We already have a non-root user with sudo access and there is no reason to expose root login to SSH. Then change challenge response authentication to yes. You might have noticed that I didn't change password authentication to no, like you usually do when you have a public key, and you're going to see why in just a second. For now, save the file, quit, and then restart the SSH service by typing sudo systemctl restart sshd. So if you log into the server with the YubiKey plugged in, you'll need to touch it to log in. So that's all normal, right? But now I'm going to try logging into the server without the YubiKey. And as you can see, SSH throws an error, but then it asks for my password and then a one-time password from the phone app, which means you'll need either YubiKey or phone app to log into your server. So now you might want to ask me, well, Wolfgang, we got through SSH, all right, but what about Nextcloud? We only have a couple of minutes left in the video. Well, let me introduce you to Ansible. Ansible is an orchestration tool for Linux systems, which lets you write advanced scripts to set up software on your system. So we're going to use a so-called Ansible playbook to set up Nextcloud, fail to ban and UFW. The playbook will do everything for us and we'll just sit back and relax. I'm going to be using this playbook by Reiner Nipes. Nipes? I'm not sure. It's pretty much the most popular Ansible playbook to set up Nextcloud and with that you also have the possibility to set up Nextcloud Talk, Collabora and OnlyOffice, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but it's fairly easy to set up. So the first thing that we're going to do is clone the Git repository. Log into your server and type git clone, the address of the Git repository, dash b, nextcloud, dash reloaded. Then change to the nextcloud directory and run prepare system.sh. Wait while the script installs Ansible and all the required dependencies. So once that's done, we need to edit the inventory file. Here we need to set our domain name right here. Then comment out this line and uncomment this one. We won't be using a self-signed certificate because that would set up the browser warnings. Then here you should also put your email for certificate expiration warnings. And the rest of the file is fine. I'm pretty much going to leave everything as it is. And after you're finished, save the file and quit. Now we're ready to launch the setup process. Just run nextcloud.yml and make yourself a coffee or a tea. The process will take a long time. After the installation is finished, let's open up a browser and enter our domain name. And if you did everything correctly, you're going to see the Nextcloud login screen. Congratulations, we're almost done here. If you didn't set the admin password, go back to the terminal and scroll up. The script should have generated a random password for you, so copy that and paste it into the Nextcloud screen. Now I need to install two apps. Click on the A in the top right corner, click on Apps, and then search for U2F. Install the app called Two Factor U2F and then search for TOTP and install that app as well. Those two apps are needed to set up two-factor authentication for Nextcloud. Now let's go to settings, security, and here you'll see the two-factor authentication section. So let's set up the YubiKey authentication first, plug in your YubiKey and click on add U2F device. You should get a notification from your browser. U2F is supported in all the new versions of Firefox and Chrome. Touch the USB token and then set a name for it. I'm gonna call mine YubiKey 5C NFC. Then we're going to set up the phone app. 
tap on enable TOTP. You're going to see the QR code on your screen and then it's pretty much the same as the first time. Scan the code with the app on your phone and then enter the one-time password that the app has generated right here and click on verify. And now we're basically done with the tutorial. Let's log out and try to log in with our login and password. As you can see, you'll have two options here, either a physical key or an app on your phone, just like with SSH. And there you go, we have successfully set up two-factor authentication for both SSH and Nextcloud. So that's gonna be it for this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.